so much about men from walking my dog. So much. Let me give you a couple examples. One, I learned about consent and the fact that most men see my dog as an extension of me. So they don't really ask for consent to touch the dog. Usually, every once in a while, I am pleasantly surprised by a man asking, can I touch your dog? Although sometimes I say no, because I don't really want to deal with them dealing with my dog, because my dog is very anxious. Like, he seems like a chill dog. I know in these videos, like, mm, but he's not. He, he's chill when he's dealing with nobody else but me. He's very nervous around people he doesn't know, especially in crowded environments, you know? Don't know why. We adopted him at the age of six, so I have no idea what kind of trauma he's got, but there's some. Whereas when my husband and I are out, and my husband has the dog, and under his care, and he's holding the leash, nobody touches that dog without asking. I mean, kids every once in a while try to because they don't know any better, but men, men never, because I watch, because I find it so annoying that they just feel, you know, like the same way that I've heard that women who are pregnant say that people just feel entitled to touching their bellies, don't even ask, or just like, ooh, you're pregnant, so I'm just gonna touch your unborn child while it's inside of your belly, just because I feel like I have been entitled to, I mean, that just shows you the mentality, okay, uh, of, of, of society in general towards women's bodies, but especially men. But they do not do that with my husband, which is so, so, so telling. They ask for consent first. But here's another thing that I noticed today, just today. So I'm, I'm walking um, Moe's, our dog, and my, my, my in-law's dog, because we're house sitting up here. And um, this is like in the country, so you don't really uh, cross people very often. And my dog is like so attached to me, he never runs off. So I can have him off leash, no problem. He, you know, I can't, you know we call him a little first stalker because he's just like, mommy, mommy, you know, we're working on that. But the other dog, Lucky, he's a border collie. So he's not like a huge dog, but he's still like a medium dog. And he's so friendly. Actually, he's like the peacemaker. He goes up like anytime he breaks up fights between dogs. He's like the protector. He swoops in if he sees anyone in danger. He, when he, w w when my in-laws are watching television, like football, he'll chase the ball. But more importantly, anytime he sees a fight between animals, between people, or any kind of aggression at all, he runs up to the TV and is like, no, 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 no. Like he's, he gets so upset at the threat of violence. Even if it's fake and on TV, I didn't even know that dogs can really see what's happening on TV. But every time he, if he's across the room, he comes, swoops in. So this, the point of me saying all this is this dog is the least aggressive dog I've maybe I've ever met. If anything, he is very pro peace, right? He's all about peace. So we were walking today and this woman was coming, um, approaching us and she had a stroller with a very teeny tiny baby laying in it, you know? And my thought immediately was like, and this is how I've been conditioned to think, right? And the fact that men do not think this way blows my mind because they are not conditioned under patriarchy, which, which tells them to be obsessed with the individual themselves and not anyone else and not be empathetic and not put themselves in other people's position, especially women, right? Maybe they'll put themselves in, in a grapist position and be like, well, if I was him, I'd be, you know, <laughs> they never put themselves in a position in the right way. And I thought, okay, well, I know this dog is a peaceful dog. He's not going to touch that baby. He's not going to, like, he's, he's definitely not going to bite that baby. He's a very gentle dog. I know that, but the mom doesn't know that. And I know that she doesn't know that. So my first thought was like, oh, man, if I was her and I had a baby and I saw two dogs approaching, both of them off leash, even though one is a lab and the other one's a border collie and they seem chill, I would be very nervous. And also as someone who loves dogs but got bit by a pit bull once when I was volunteering at a animal shelter and he literally came out of nowhere and bit me ever since that moment i've been scared of dogs i love dogs but that one dog created like a trauma response in me that every time i'm around a dog i don't know like i get nervous which then feeds into them being like why are you nervous you know like they can smell fear i think i don't know whatever the point is i did a lot of emotional labor on my end to try to see how i may be posing a threat to this woman especially as a mother of a tiny tiny baby and so I immediately was like, call them over, lucky, eat, you know what I mean? And, and, and got them under control to give this woman a peace of mind. Now, maybe she wasn't worried, you know, for all I know, this is a tiny village. Maybe she even knows lucky. Maybe she knows he's not going to hurt her kid. Maybe she loves dogs and is excited to see him. But I know just the way that, you know, we have to, women have to see every single man as like a loaded gun. I know that I know that every dog is a loaded gun. And I also know that a lot of people have trauma responses to dogs because of one incident. 
I know children are often very afraid of dogs just by the sheer size, especially if they have not been raised around dogs. I know a lot of women are afraid of dogs for the same reason, right? And I also know history and how dogs have been used as agents of white supremacy, especially towards the black community, right? So anytime I see someone coming and I, I scan their face and, and see like, I mean, and this is when I have the dog on the leash, you know, which I usually do. I'm in the country, so it's a little bit more, in the city, I always have them on the leash. Anytime I see us coming towards someone, immediately my thought, because I have this, this thing that could be dangerous and at the very least could ignite a trauma response in someone else because other dogs are dangerous. The first thing I do is try to take care of their fear so that I don't create that for them just by my presence. And what pissed me off today is realizing how that is just my nature to do that because I was taught empathy and also just being conditioned as a woman. I was constantly taught to think of like, you know, have a thermometer up everyone's butt, right? And then also being like codependent on top of that, like, is, you know, it's like extreme. And what makes me so mad is that whenever I cross dog owners that are men who clearly are not working on their empathy or thoughtfulness or any of the emotional skills that they really need to learn if they don't want to become obsolete in this world, and if they want women to have anything to do with them, the men who are not doing that work and deconstructing these power systems, right? The fact that they will be just, they'll gaslight us. If I see a pit bull coming, especially with my own experience with pit bull, but also having a dog and knowing that pit bulls are one of the nicest dogs in the world, but I don't trust their owner. Their owners are the ones that make them scary, right? We know like how they train pit bulls in horrific ways. And a lot of men have these dogs so that they can, it's like, it's like carrying, you know, in France, you can't carry pew pews, right? So a lot of men will just have these dogs. It's like a, it's kind of like a, you know, four-legged pew pew. Like, hey man, I got power. Are you scared of me? Don't mess with me. And some of these men don't even care that they are, they're triggering the fear responses in people. I mean, some of them probably like that they're doing it, but some of them don't even notice or care and do nothing, you know, or they, or they overestimate their dog. And I think I, you know, I, I came on here several months ago when my dog got attacked by another dog because a man, a man didn't have him on leash. And I knew right away by looking at that dog, he's going to attack my dog because I could just tell. So immediately when I saw that dog coming, because we were in the country, I put mine on a leash and kept him close. But that other man didn't, you know, didn't call his dog. He was just like, or he was like, me, 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 me. He didn't aggressively go and get that dog under control. The dog attacked my dog and then I got pushed over and then the dog bit me trying to get at my dog. And the whole time the man did nothing, nothing to help me. I literally was looking, I was like kicking his dog off me and I was looking at him like, you're just not going to do anything. So like literally, again, you will never convince me that men are protectors of anything. Most of them, other than protecting themselves and their property. And all they do is provide stress and a sense of danger and trauma responses for it. And the fact that just seeing it so much clearly as a dog owner, how little emotional labor any of these men are willing to do and how much I do on a regular basis to try to make sure that other people feel safe around my dog that I know is not going to attack them. But I'm also adopted this dog. I don't, he's still an animal. I don't know. I don't know for sure what he's going to do. So I take precaution of what he could do, but even more importantly, of, of their trauma responses, their fear, their legitimate fear of my dog, and the fact that men won't even do that with themselves. Uh, what, you know, they're pissed that we're suspicious of them. We're pissed. God. You know, honestly, at this point, it's the, it's the sheer laziness of all of these men who will not evolve, they will not change, they won't do anything to think about anyone but themselves. I'm so over it. You, once you see it, you see it everywhere. Ugh. It's even more exhausting realizing how much they're not doing. Like, I, I realize how much I do to, to, to tiptoe around them, but when you see how much they're not doing it, uh, 